this class, I would like to talk about a common use of a background image in the industry today. It is commonly referred to as a hero image, and we see an example of one right here. A hero image is a large banner prominently placed on the web page, generally in the front and center. It can take up the full height of the screen, or it can take up a majority of the height of the screen. This image is the first thing the visitor will encounter. It presents an overview of the most important content in the site. The hero image extends the full width and height of the container in which it is placed. Typically, there is other content also strategically placed inside that container. When the website is resized, everything generally flows nicely. Note that there is a gradient overlay placed on top of it to mute it out so that it is not overpowering the message. Here we have another example of a hero image. Again, we have a gradient placed on top of it. This time the gradient really does mute out the background almost to the extent that you cannot see the details. Here is another example of a hero image, and in this case the image is very sharp and clear. Notice that on all of these images, which are coded as background images, we will commonly see navigation, also what are referred to as call to action buttons, so that visitor can make a decision to pursue some more information. Another example, and one more example. So the hero image is placed in the front and center. It can occupy the full width and height, or it can occupy a percentage of the height. It is an overview of the most important concepts in that site. Not only does it enhance the design of the web page, but it adds to the content, grabs the visitor's attention, and invites the visitor to explore the site further. These images are implemented using the CSS background properties. The most important property is the background size property set to the value of cover. The background size property, when set to the value of cover, will fill that element with the background image as much as possible, meaning as much as the content. However, we might want to show the entire image. In order to show the entire image, we need to set a percentage on the height. We would also have a percentage on the width, but that is the default behavior of any HTML element to be 100% the width of the parent element or the screen. One approach to setting a percentage height is to use the VH unit. This is a relatively new unit in CSS. It stands for viewport height. The syntax would be height colon 100 VH. 100 means 100% 100 of the viewport height. The viewport is essentially the screen of the device. By setting the height in this manner, it will force the image to fill the entire area, which allows us to set a width measurement. Setting a percentage is a problem because the page can scroll. We also can set a percentage using the height property set to 100%. However, that will not work in and of itself. We also need to set the height starting value for the body and the HTML element also so that our height will scale in a percentage of that. The next thing we need to do is to align the content. Because we want the placement of the content to scale with the background image, we do not want to use fixed measurements for the margins, etc. Flexbox is the best solution because it will allow the content to scale both vertically and horizontally with a change in screen size. The flex properties would be set to the containing element or the parent, and they would affect how the child element or the flex items behave. Positioning is also another choice. If we were to relatively position the parent, we could absolutely position the content using percents. We would need to use the transform property and the translate value so that everything would reposition when the screen size changed. Finally, should you wish to place an overlay on top of your background image, that would be implemented using the multiple background syntax.
We have a very simple web page for our hero image demo. Here we have a section element inside the body. This is the section where the hero image will be. I have a class equals hero image. That sets the background properties for this image. The div inside contains the content that will be placed on top of the image. I also have some information in my body. If we look at the CSS, I always set the box sizing property to border box for all of my elements. In the event that I need to set a width, I will not need to calculate the padding or the border. I have my default style set for the body. I always set the margin to zero pixels to prevent any gaps around the content inside the page. Here is my hero image code. We are predominantly concerned with the background image. So we have the background image property. We have the background repeat set to no repeat. We have the background position set to center. And most importantly, we have the background size set to cover. Now this will force the image to stretch to accommodate the container. I also have an outline set around the text just to see what it looks like. And the H1 element inside, I have the margin set to zero to prevent any type of gaps at the top of my page. When I look at this in the browser, you see that although I have the background size set to cover, I only see part of my image. That is the default behavior. A background image will only be as wide and high as the container. And the container is only as wide and high as the text inside it. A section element is by default 100% the width of the browser screen. However, the height is dependent on the content. We do not want to set a fixed height for this. There are two ways that we can stretch this height out so that it will accommodate the entire image. If I were to set a height of 100%, it will not work. You can see that the browser doesn't know what 100% of the height is. That is because a page has the ability to scroll, unlike width, which is easy for the browser to calculate. A trick that developers use so that we can use a percentage height is to set the height for the body and the HTML element. So if we were to establish a base height of 100%, we can figure out what this height is based on that 100%. Now you can see that my hero image occupies 100% the height of my screen. Should I wish to change that to 80%, in the event that I don't want my hero image occupying all of the screen, I can do that. Notice, now I have my scroll bar and I have more content. So in order to use height as a percent, we need to first establish the height as a percent to both the body and the HTML tag. Very similar to how we initialize the font size of 100% to the body, so that we can use our EM measures effectively. However, this is old school. It works, but there's a better solution. We can set 100 viewport height. The viewport is the area that is visible inside the screen. So viewport height and viewport width are terms that are more commonly used with our handheld devices, although it applies also to the browser. 100 essentially means 100%. Now we can see that my hero image is back to 100%. Should I wish to change that to 80 viewport height, which would be 80%? Again, I can do that. So this is the better approach using a viewport height. The next thing we want to do is to work with our text. Notice that I have centered the text. It looks nice. However, we want to move it down and we want it to maintain its perspective or placement with respect to the image when the browser gets smaller and when the browser gets larger. One solution is to use positioning. If we were to position the outer container, which has the hero image, to a relative positioning, 
then we could absolutely position that div to it. Here we have the section which is relatively positioned. So now we can absolutely position this div to its parent. I have used the top and the left, and let's see how that looks. Notice it looks very nice. Should I move my browser, it doesn't look all that nice anymore. If I were to change the left to 50% and add the transform property set to translate, minus 50%, minus 50%, it would balance this out when the page moves and it actually works very well. Here we see our web page. As I change the width, notice everything is still placed symmetrical to the image. Another alternative, which is being more commonly used in the industry today, is to use Flexbox. Here I have Display Flex set to the parent container. I also have Justify Content set to center, Align Items set to center, so everything will constantly be balanced. Here is our Flex container. We only have one Flex child, but that Flex child will be centered on that page and balanced. It will be centered horizontally and vertically, and it will retain that perspective when the page changes. So here we see our image. And as the browser changes, everything stays centered as it should. The last thing we want to do outside of formatting our text is to fade this background out a little bit. That is accomplished by applying a linear gradient as part of a multiple background. We already have the background image of the runner. Now we have the linear gradient and we have our from value and our to value. Notice that they are very closely related. They are different shades of black. You can use a different color. You can use the same values for the from and to, however it suits you. When I save it, now you see we have the gradient. All we need to do is to brighten up our text.